Okay, uh, this is picking up. This is the second video. In the first video, we created a query to pull some data from a number of tables from our source system, and we created the destination table in our target system that we want to load. And now in this uh, video, I'm going to show you how to use integration services as kind of the binder for those two things. So we'll uh, create a new package, a new SSI package. It's a project, new SSIS package here. We'll click on that. And that gives us a new package name. And what we'll do is, the default name is package1. We'll rename it and we'll call it uh, load and then we'll give it the table name, load factbal. And it's going to ask us if we want to rename the package object as well, which we do, so we're going to say yes. Now, under we're at the control flow tab here, and so what we want to do is we're going to create a data flow task. So I'm left mouse clicking down, moving over, and releasing, and that's creating this data flow task. Now I'm going to double click on that, which is going to move me over to the data flow tab, and these are my available data flow sources. Sources. We're going to use the OLEDB source, and we're going to double click on this source. And then this little wizard that comes up, uh, we're going to create a new connection. And our source system, if you recall, was DataBridge, PC DataBridge, the DataBridge database. And so we're going to click OK. And then when we pull down the table or view, we have a number of selections. For this instance, we're going to click SQL command. And I already have the query that we created in the clipboard, so I'm just going to paste it in. And we'll do a quick preview. And you can see that the data is there. So that's good. So you go to the columns, you can see the columns have been mapped. So we really didn't even need to do that. Now, before we actually create the uh, destination, I'm going to show you a, a quick technique where you can kind of test things out. And it's a temporary thing we're going to do. So we're going to use this object called data reader destination. So I'm going to place that onto the canvas. And then I'm going to make a connection between the OLEDB source and that. And then I'm going to right mouse click on the arrow and go to Data Viewers. And under Data Viewers, I'm going to add a grid. We're going to click OK. And then OK again. And you'll see I now have a grid. And what I can do is I can run this package. Clicking here, Start Debugging, it's called. and a data grid shows up. And so I can do further analysis on the data, make sure everything's clean the way I want it. And then since I'm in the debug mode, I'm going to click on Stop Debugging. And everything looks good, so I'm just going to get rid of that. A good uh, temporary way of just checking things out before you add your destination. Now in the destination, I could also use well, ADB destination, but I'll show you we're going to use SQL Server destination just to show you we can use that as well. Alright, I'm going to make the connection. And then I'm going to double click on this object. And the default, it's assuming that I want the current database, which is DataBridge, which I don't, so I'm going to click New. Our destination table is actually in the database called DataBridge DW, if you recall. So I pick that, and then I can go down and select my table in view. 
And once I've established the connection, I can then go to Mappings, and this is going to show the mapping between the source and the target. And if you notice, some of the mappings are different. Like, for example, this one right here, plan name and insurance plan. So if you recall from the query, we actually changed the name. And so I have to manually map this. So I want to, or it's not going to come across. Plan name. So now I've got all the mappings the way that I want. You can see it's smart enough to understand that it's the same name. There's just a case difference. And do the mapping for you. Uh, I'm going to click on the advanced tab. I don't really care about check any constraints, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to click uh, OK. Now, we're actually ready to run the package. When you do business this way, you don't have to do any data checking or data transformations. And so we're actually ready to run the package. So the idea is, is if you do all your work up front with the query and you've checked it out and you do all your work on the back end and check it out, well, life is good. And, and what I mean by that is, let's go in for a minute. If we right mouse click and show the advanced editor and click on the input output tab. Now if I pull these down, I can see my source and my destination columns, my source and my destination columns. If I look at them, because I've created the queries and the tables on both end, a SQL Server, the package process or whatever you want to call it, can map the data types for me between the source and the target. And since I built the destination table based off of the source query, I'm I know that my data types are going to line up. So I click OK here. I can now run and execute the package. And there it goes. It loaded the 181 rows. I'm going to switch on over and rerun this query. And I can verify that they're all there, what have you. And so that's pretty much all there is to the technique for doing this. Now, where this can come in handy, and again, let me just real quick stop the debugging so we can go back to the normal. And we'll just save the package so we have it. Saved off to disk. Now, you can use this technique that I showed you to build star schemas. So if you want to build fact tables or dimensional tables and you're doing dimensional modeling, you can use this technique that I showed you. Um, the SSIS tool actually has transformations for building dimensions and things like that, but frankly I prefer to do it this way. I just find it a, a lot easier to work with the SQL code on the source side and then on the target side to build, have the tables already built out to do this type of transformation. Number one, it saves me a lot of extra work in having to manually do mappings and things like that. So that's pretty much all I've got for this subject. And I uh, thank you for watching. Take care. Have a good one.